Okay, well, what's up, everybody, and welcome. My first attempt at Dev Build 28, Love Long War of the Chosen. We've tried a number of other Dev Builds, and um, we're looking forward to seeing some of the changes and um, challenges that this Dev Build is going to bring to us. We are just about to jump into a review of the changes of that Dev Build. First, I wanted to go into the character pool and meet the lads. These are the guys who have submitted names for the from the viewers. If you'd like to join, follow the link in the description to the Discord. Uh, create a bin file, create a soldier, export it into a bin file, and upload that bin file to the Long War of the Chosen character submissions channel. That lads. Okay, so at the top here we got some classics like the Governor, which of course you have to have because of the existence of that voice pack. There's Adam Jensen as well. He's been a badass in some of the other campaigns. Conan the Barbarian, just because I wanted an excuse to use another uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger voice pack. Of course, there's a Hulkster. Bane from the Dark Knight movies, as well as uh, the Joker as well. And we've got Monty Bloody Peasant Python, so I can use the Monty Python voice pack. Sarge Cruz, I might even lose him because not have him because he just screams all the time there's me i would load up okay but it was a ghost for a second and now all of the previously submitted soldiers have been removed so everybody who has submitted now recently is in so if you've submitted someone last season or before you're gonna need to resubmit first we got danny mad doc iron south african lacquer where's he from Where's he been? No one knows. But he's got an axe to grind with Advent. <laughs> cool. And by the way, for those of you watching uh, who want to skip this part where we're going to meet the lads, go over the dev build changes and do Gatecrasher, I think just skip ahead to like episode two or so. Let's see, MAL. Some of these soldiers take quite a while to load, but they do actually... I don't know why some of them take so long to load. I'm assuming it's because of some sort of combination uh, of visuals they are using. Country of origin, Canada. Mysterious. Oh, and I should uh, note to you guys that if it's if the audio sounds a bit echoey, it's because this is the first stream and recording session I'm doing from my man cave. And with the girlfriend and uh, her kids moving in, I've had to move out of my office into the garage and I haven't soundproofed it yet. If it sounds a bit tinny and echoey, that will change. Is George Booze Martin. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> I like the emo haircut. Backstory? What am I? A fucking superhero? Nice one. Uh, Iradu Hopeless Diallo. Ew. Oh yeah, this is the lad who I said looked like he's Jensen's arch enemy. Hopeless wasn't gonna let a little thing like death stop him from killing some Xenos. Nice. I like the idea that he's, you know, like a resurrected cyborg type of dude George Martin you reckon that the hair for the model who submitted bugged out it's supposed to be just brown well what a wonderful uh, accident we're gonna keep that luminous green here is modern war dragon blackwing land of origin Germany while working in education he didn't quite know what to think for of the aliens at first Hoping that things would get better, he tried to live, but sadly, he couldn't just override his natural awareness. Some things seemed off, some things didn't add up, and even if it was just conspiracy at first, it became apparent to him that something was off. They joined XCOM to liberate the world. Now, to warn you all, if there's suddenly a loud crash and me screaming at my cat, because Lilu is just noticing bookshelf. Now she's jumped up onto the bookshelf and has no way to get down cat doing cat things right ruler kuniger nice a templar of me some templars there are concerns among the resistance regarding speculation that several recent recruits may have actually been escapees from a high security prison facility in the united states h is on their list of possible detainees but at this point we're not in a position to turn away skilled fighters regardless of where they've been the old don't ask, don't tell approach to uh, getting soldiers. I like it. Right, a couple more to go. This is sick Nanford. Yes. US of A. Last guy who called me Nick Sanford ended up with a nice bullet hole. Also, I'm from Wyoming. Cool. 
Uh, we've got Truman, Trumi Griffin. Our backstory, another mysterious man. Virtual Odin Viking, oh hell yes. We've got ourselves the Reaper. Country of origin, Canada, date of birth. He looks kind of like um, a guy from Metal Gear. Ooh. Hmm. My personal favorite. Zap the, Fl the Velour Fog Brannigan. I created this myself. The man with no name. Discoverer of Advent's preset kill limit. And a lover like no other. He fears only death by snoo snoo. What a legend. We've got Waldo, the Ranger Haddock. Crazy man who claims to have come from an alternate universe where dragons are real. They are friends. His burn marks are evidence for the first point and against the second. Mostly competent soldier, though he's not real excited about killing. Even if it is just aliens. It says that every intelligent species should have a right to life. This reservation is something he's able to get around, but it means protecting his squad, though. Backstory is not the only sign of reduced sanity, unfortunately. In private, he has been caught talking to himself or inanimate objects and swearing at it, arguing with it. He also has an interesting way of moving around the base when he's not doing anything particularly important. Some combination of ballet and drunken swagger that somehow manages to avoid knocking anyone or anything over. But he refuses to dance, despite his clear skill in maintaining his balance through various bodily gyrations. And a sentence we couldn't get through. Let's just say he's prone to gastric attacks echo delightfully around the Avenger. Nice backstory there, Waldo. And last but not, not least, oh yeah, the uh, Medic Bay rider, Rob Algerman Roy. Redacted and or not suitable for work. Okay, nice. Right. So those are the lads. So far. Now, I need to jump over to... Not game capture and chrome. That ain't right. There you go. Okay, let's do a quick uh, Long War the Chosen dev build review. I'm going to go over some of the major changes. I think they're going to affect us. Ooh. Hashtag production quality. Right -o. So I'm not going to read everything word for word. I just want to hit on some of the major points that I think are going to be most important for us. The headline changes are the big ones. And these are the ones that made me want to jump into a campaign. The, the chosen Avenger assault should not happen, should now happen later. So players have an actual chance to defeat the relevant chosen beforehand. This is huge. And this is pretty much what sunk our last campaign because playing as we do with all pods active, if you have to defend the Avenger, it's just not doable. Having 46 aliens running at you on turn one is a problem. If we do have to defend the Avenger, we'll give it a go. Uh, and if it's too brutal, then we can, we're going to reload without all pods active and see how that works. We're just going to have to come up with some sort of explanation for that. Covert actions no longer have a soldier captured risk, which is huge. I mean, especially later on when you have like master sergeants and gunnery sergeants and really valuable troops. And you, send, you have to send them out for some intel and you have to pay intel to stop the capture. It's just not worth it. Chain lightning actually chains now and has no aim penalty, but it can't hit as many enemies as before. Is that the Warlock Chain Lightning, or is that the Templar? We'll have to see. The Community Promotion Screen no longer included. Okay, fine, I got that. Yellow. Yellow Alert, Reflex Action. Civilians running and other rated issues are now fixed. I don't know how this is going to interact with all pods active, but so far with Yellow Alert built in and running all pods active, we haven't picked up too many issues. Chosen no longer have weaknesses, except for the adversary ones. Reaper, Templar, Skirmisher. Yeesh. The adversary weaknesses are now slightly stronger, from 20 damage to 25. Okay. The idea being is you need to pay more attention to what type of chosen is active in the region you than to send in that uh, counter specifically. I think what we might actually do then with our faction soldiers is we might just generally try to keep them in reserve uh, unless we know we have an important mission coming up where a particular chosen is active. It's also going to incentivize us scanning in uh, two regions simultaneously, one for each type of chosen so that two of the three faction soldiers can have a mission to go. One for all no longer removes burning, that's fair enough. One for all now uses the shield wall visualization, okay. Rebels now get stock strike and get up. Okay, that's bloody great. So the rebels can actually help your soldiers then. If they are mind controlled, they can stock strike them. And 
if they start their turn next to one of your guys who are bleeding out, if you then stabilize that soldier, Rebel can then use Get Up to get them conscious, which is important because you have to stop Chosen from stealing intel. New tutorial boxes, that's whatever. And that's about it. As you can see, the rest is all dev build 28.1 and 28. But these headline changes are the main thing. Okay. Let's get into it. Uh, this in-game sounding, lads. Test, 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 test. Good. Righto, what time? It's 10 minutes in. Okay, I might even make that a little standalone video. Ah, fuck it. So, Commander, as usual, under the advanced options, we are not going to choose a starting location. We'll leave that up to fate. Greatly increase HP? Nope. Nope. Lengthy scheme? Nope. Uh, we are just going to disable the Long War the Chosen tutorial. We won't disable them or we'll make them baby chosen. Okay, good. Next. Without Iron Man, because of course it's a modded campaign, so if you're running a modded campaign, you cannot um, Accessing the feed now. run Iron Man. You're going to skip all the videos because we've all seen them a thousand times. Excitement continues to build as city centers across the globe. Re and just a reminder for you lads who are adding soldiers through the Discord throughout the campaign, I'm going to try to add them between episodes, or be between streaming sessions, and I expect to do two or three episodes per streaming session, so... If you've submitted someone, you might just have to ep wait a couple episodes, but you should get in. I'm really keen to see who we get. Oh, there's Zap Brannigan. Happy with that. And we got Monty Python and Deus Ex. And who who be this badass? Ugh, I really don't like... Wait, is this Ruins of... Okay, this, this is a... City center, this isn't the tunnels fight. Tunnels fight suck. And no, don't tell me the game's bloody crashing. Oh, come on. Oh! Dang it. I did test for stability during the week and I had about three or four hours of play without issue. Okay, let's just restart and hope that that was a fluke. I had some issues with 28.1. But 28.2 has been mostly, mostly fine. I truly hope I'm not going to have to spend time now troubleshooting mods. But uh, Modern, you put together all the visual mods we're using. And you reckon you tested them all with 28.2. And all the other mods, the core mods and the quality of life ones, I tested and they were all fine. Ugh. <laughs> that again. And, uh, I do like that it's actually saving your advanced options. Use the voiceover. Not going to help Bradford. Still going to keep whinging endlessly. Commander, that's one of the two dozen. Holding stable so far. Look that the little Vigilo Confido logo is spinning is encouraging. Indeed, modern. Yeah, as you say, you tested everything, seems fine. Right, so there's Jensen. That looks like Monty Python. That's the badass dude. 
Who is this? It's one of the Germans. Don't crash, don't crash. There we go. Ooh. I've been working on the cover for a long time. Oh, nice. There, there's the governor. Okay, so. As is customary with every campaign, head into Long War the Chosen, put the Grey's Band down, pause on recruit. Campaign 30 degrees, hidden potential at 25%, red fog for all. Show me the locked perks. Right, We've got Conan the Barbarian. Super, super slow, crap aim, but he's a tank. What are we going to do with him? He doesn't even have great mental resistance. Decent hack, actually. Size low. Where are all his stat points sitting? It's all sitting in hit point. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. It might sound crazy, but I might even make him a shinobi because he's going to be super buff. Have great dodge, but the fact that he'll be using an SMG will offset his slow mobility. Okay. Uredu Hopeless Diallo. Slightly above average. I think that's as low as it can go. That is a yikes right there. Slightly above average. That's nice above average. Could be another Shinobi. And decent psychic ability. I think one of the issues I have with this not created equal is that too many points get soaked up into your psychic pool. Okay. Waldo the Ranger Haddock. Also below average. God, these guys can't shoot for shit. Nice dodge. That's good though. Uh, Barter Demon Duarte. Oh, three hit points. A great mental resistance. That's nice. Slightly above average. And these guys can't shoot at all so far. Bloody Peasant Path. Another meat shield. Nice hack skill. Rumi Griffin. Can someone please roll in the 70s? My god. SX36. Three, three hit points. 60. What the? 67 is our highest accuracy. Uh, so XT ownage, yes, I know that some of the mods I've got give uh, non-compatible warnings with Long War the Chosen, but I have tried it before. Seems to be pretty fine. Order's confirmed. Moving I'm out. taking that chance. No need to ask twice. Righto, who's going to be on point? You would think that demon would be on point. I advance. Oh, she's female. All right, all right. Okay. No need to ask twice. Let's settle in. And while I sneak everybody forward, let's talk tactics. Copy that. On the tactical level, on the world map, Loud that is. Clear. Uh, the one thing I'm going to be doing differently from past playthroughs is that I'm going to maintain two countries on intel gathering almost at all times. The only time I will have less than two countries gathering intel is when the barracks, all our people are exhausted. And if I can't field another squad. So for the most part, we're going to always have two countries gathering intel. The idea being that we just need to have... A lot more squads out in the field, especially in the beginning. We need to hammer the missions, trying to gather as much intel, just as much general rewards as we can. Um, side troops. Move, move, move. This campaign, I want to make side troops a central part of every squad. Yes, I see. Now, given that there are eight, uh, eight soldier types, and if I use okay, side troops, that's the ninth one. That means that. I kind of have to choose one of the classes and not use them. And I'm not going to be using assault troopers, which I know might be a little no problem, controversial, but you can have a whole two hour long discussion about which is the weakest of the eight starting you know, classes. But for the way I want to do things this campaign, now I'm going to leave the assaults to one side. It is going to suck to have that ability to remove Overwatch in the early game, and it's going to suck to have the ability to stun, zap an enemy, take them out for a turn. 
But one thing I found in the previous campaign was that on the biggest, most horrifying missions, like when you have 30, 40, 50 aliens running at you, um, it's already bad enough to have a shinobi who has to press forward into all of that. But then having an assault trooper as well. No These good. guys make up the bulk of the advent forces we've dealt with. They're disciplined and well equipped, but their obedience makes them predictable. Moving out. I will go. So anyway, I'm not going to get too depressed so far about the state of the soldiers because we need to see what the barracks looks like first. Hopefully we have a few 75 plus aim gods waiting to become sharpshooters. In a recent offline campaign, I think the highest I've ever seen aim-wise on a recruit was 83. Then I had two hit points. Got it. That's affirmative. Oh yes, so one other key element of how we're going to do this this campaign uh, is skipping lasers entirely and we are going to be making extensive use of the three classes that get center mass to up their damage especially in the early game so those are the rangers the gunners and the sharpshooters and i'm hoping that having those characters with uh, center mass for the extra damage boost is going to offset the delay to getting mag weapons we trust that we're not going to get revealed here it's very it's trouble time I have my orders. All right, Ogman, nice to have you here. We have a med bay bed ready for you. Moving. All right, let's hang on. I'm just going to adjust my aircon. Hot here in the man cave. Formative covering now. Again, in Africa, so hot everywhere. Always. Eyes on the prize. To that position. Attacking on sight. Yeah, let's go. What is it exactly you need me to do? Roger, I've got my eyes on. I got the picture. I got the picture. He asked him knowingly. <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink, grin, grin, say no more, say no more. Your wife, does she go, eh? Does she go? I bet she does, I bet she does. He's got a 55 aim. That's going to start off a cheeky little grenade. But that's hopeless. Who's already. Otherwise, they're 60. The lowest aim. Um, righto, lads. Uh, there's two. There's a gunner and a sentry, which are the two that I most want to make sure go down this turn. All right, here we go. It's uh, kick the tires, light the fires, as they say. Our Dev Build 28 campaign underway. Good luck, everyone. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Don't give me that crap. The oh, that's an entire pod behind us. The advent officers seem Shit. more capable than the grunts. We're not sure whether to chalk it up to training or stricter mind control. 
Although they bear some resemblance to the sectoids first encountered during the okay, scary shit. There's like, there's like four enemies that are going to have a shot on us. With an even greater psionic potential. It's a pity. Hopefully we can pick one off here and then flashbang the rest. We have how much flashbang coverage for those three? I can't do anything about this lad. This dude is the best chance I have to get a kill. Trooper trooper. Good shooting. Drawing flashbang. Ugh. Rip the mid bay. Okay. The first shot of the campaign is a max damage so hit. Another max damage hit. Mr. Target, cover the flank. Coming in from the side. I'll thump him if he calls me big nose again. You called bladder bastard. So that's. Strike calculus. That's three shots by the enemy all around 50% and all of them hit and all of them rolled max damage. <laughs> In short, bad luck. Whatever you say. Thought we needed. I need to slow down here. I'm playing annoyed, which is obviously the worst way to play. Seven active. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Conan does need to go first. How is that not a one square back? Oh. Very nice. Come on. luck so far. I need someone to do a grenade bend to hit those two troopers. I'm going. Just to recap, that's the advent of five for five so far on their shots on Gatecrasher. Like unheard of bad luck. That's more like it. I'm not gonna kill this fucking trooper. Unbelievable. Oh. Now I have to depend on Jensen to hit a shot at some distance here on that trooper. I've been thinking about why they attacked. What they were really after. 52. So the surveillance drone is the most important thing to kill this turn. Careful with this grenade. Make sure not to hit our own grenade. I'm quiet because I'm seething with rage. This one's going to be bright. That 
this, yeah, it's the officer that worries me the most. Finally, they miss a shot. Good lord. Two turns left. Ought to be able to make it. Yes, stay grouped up like that, please. I can't move. Don't move. <laughs> I'm pinned down here. I don't want to turn that down. But if 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 we lose our skirmisher on Gatecrasher, <laughs> oh, that's gonna be so sad. So who's who's furthest away is these lads? They're the, honestly they're the least likely to be able to contribute this turn. No problem. Come on, give me a grenade. Grenade plus a hit from range there will hopefully do for the officer. I need four points of damage there though. Benson has just a flashbang though. Ten percent, so I might hang on to the flashbang. Although I can maybe flash the sectoid again in a pinch. Five left. That's one, two, four plus one. Point blank, this trooper. Not a bad option. Although he is the sixty-two aim lad. Having to move my guys when there's potentially enemies overwatching is pretty scary, but I've got lads bleeding out, so I can't afford to not rush at them. Walter! Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Four left. One. Two. Let's try to make sure we get this trooper off the field and actually leave the sectoid to mind control. But don't mind the mind control. You can just flashbang the sectoid and get rid of the mind control that way. If I leave Monty Python here, who's the other enemy he's in range of? Is he in range of that guy there in that building? On that square? He is. If I put him here, that should pull the AI towards me, so potentially an Overwatch trap opens up. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, he agrees. 69. Giggity. Do we have a grenade? There's a grenade there. If that opens up, that would. George Martin has a grenade. And I'll throw it that far though. Let's hope George Martin has a good arm. Seems doable. You are having a bath. Hey, catch! Oh, so there was a little while where something like this would have been a step out flank. But basically just gives you that for free. I think I might have to take the guaranteed damage, the grenade, and we move hopeless up here. And then shoot the trooper, but then he is flanked by the sick toy. It's super annoying that when a, a ally is downed, they actually occupy that square. Putting Hopeless into this flank, the sector could just shoot him and kill him. If this hits that, it kind of solves the problem for us. Uh. Bloody peasant, here we go. Oh, damn, damn, damn. Dude, cheat! Now I have to.
have to probably sacrifice Hopeless. I need to hit, and he has to roll at least a 4. There's 66 on 75. Boom. How about that? Nice one. And I could motivate this sectoid to try to take a flank. Jensen can take a shot from the sectoid, so let's get nice and close. Don't shoot, just do some mind control shit. That trooper's gonna be tough to... Oh. Crit, but at least minimum damage on top of that. Sectoid doesn't take the height advantage shot, it's probably tucking itself away. Yep. So if we don't kill both these enemies this turn, our faction soldier dies. How do we, how do we? I think let's focus grenades on the sectoid. Well, in this situation you take your furthermost lads and try to bring them forward. You have any kind of shot. Okay. Connie has oh, so Conan has a long range shot on that other 31%. It's not nothing at all. Jensen can get a point blank. No, he but he can get a step out flank. Copy. Jensen out. Another 69. Say. If this doesn't kill the trooper, hopefully it at least destroys his cup. Ugh, minimum damage, no cover. No, we just need to start trying to take just crazy low percentage shots and just hope. What's over there? I pick him up. Uh, will it will it pause? No, it won't. And also remember on gate crusher, no one carries med kits on gate crusher. Not good. Any other problem I can reassure you about? You yep. Cut. I'm gonna bleed to death. I've got lads out in the open, but I mean, it was worth it trying to... <sighs> like, rip demon. No problem, boss. Good points in a wounded trooper. Now the sectoid has to go down, or at least get flashbang to stop the zombie from killing someone. So that was four thirty percent and a forty three that almost. Your nose gonna be three foot wide across your face, rest on my feet for you. You're playing with fire, kid. Well, we're gonna see what happens when we lose our faction soldier gate crusher. Uh, stay with me. So Walter the Ranger, I use a mod called Stay With Me or something like that. It allows you to extend bleed out, spend actions to extend bleed out. I didn't, I've been using Stay With Me for a while, I didn't even know I could do that. I, I definitely got that one. Uh, from what I recall, Stay With Me just allows you to use uh, a soldier's med kit. But that's stabilized me. 90% miss. But brilliant. Bloody brilliant. Round of applause, everyone. Well done, Jensen. Fucking well done. Back in. Uh, I'm getting fucking annoyed now. I'm getting legitimately pissed off now. All right. What was that? Three damage. 
No crit. Minimum damage. Age building. <laughs> well, hopeless. Could. If he crits or rolls the five, no kills the sectoid. So no crit and minimum damage. Brilliant. I can handle that. Good lord, we've been unlucky on <laughs> game pressure. This is unbelievable. Alright everyone. Chill. I don't flash the sector because if you're lucky it tries to do some psychic shit. Probably just gonna shoot hopeless in the face and kill him. Oh no, there's the psychic shit. <sighs> I don't think I've ever had such a bad gate pressure start. Or rather, I can't remember the last time that I've had such a bad gate pressure start. Right. It would have been back in vanilla like I'm years going. ago. It's a 90 and an 87 that's both missed. You guys have nothing, you can say that again. Good lord. Area secured. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Two killed, two wounded. That is disastrous. Can't believe how bad that is. And this really gimps our early game as well. And despite the destruction left uh. there. Yes, we get all the corpses. To let go of the ways of the old world. They will continue their wanton If, if we now get to see the barracks and it's just full of 55 aim goons, then I'm going to restart. It's <laughs> never too much to handle. Successful shot percentage, 53. How do you even pick an MVP out of this complete shit show? 52% successful shot. I think it's got to be uh, Monty Python. Moved the most, did the most damage. Have I seen Darvis class guys? No, I've not. Um, being that I work full time and try to stream in my spare time, there just isn't time to look at other people's content. Data pad, that's awesome. It's all pretty standard. Advanced expanded is nice. Incoming transmission. Okay, let's look at the rest of the barracks. Here's the governor. Nice mobility. Crap hit points below average. Add dock, 70 aims, that's a sharpshooter. Are we gonna have any sharpshooters? Look at this. Good god, have, have that tweaked not created equal? Almost everyone is below average. Remember 60 excuse me, 65 is average. 60, 60, 67. F me! Like, if you get a 67 and thinking sniper, this is, shows you how bad it is. Well, Danny, you are on sniper duty. Okay, so Monty Python with that hack. And also, look, Mad Doc is sitting on a lot of points to hacking as well. Hmm. So, what's the most important thing in your very first few missions? Honestly, it's a shinobi, because a shinobi gets a kill every turn. So who out of these starting nerds are shinobis? Probably Jensen, he's got nice dodge. The hit points is a big problem though. That, that would turn me off him being shinobi. Who's Martin? I'm thinking direct fire class, so either ranger, gunner, drop shooter. Hopeless is out for 13 days anyway. Bloody Peasant is... With 66 aim, that's going to have to be a direct fire. He won. I think let's make Conan Shinobi because of his beefiness. 
and his mobility is not great but that's going to be offset by the fact that he's sprinting with the sword uh let's see so x mobilities for a shinobi that is rubbish rubbish not too bad not too bad that's rubbish rubbish now that's actually amazing you score one or more kills on your turn onto a single bonus move so you can slash someone and run to cover that's actually pretty fucking pog yeah ammo okay Hopeless Diallo, 55 aim. I'm gonna wait till he's healed up before I promote him. Same thing with Bloody Peasant. I just want. What am I gonna start with? A Shinobi. And the problem I have now also is that Shinobis need to bond to Star Troopers with the setup that I'm going for. Specialists are going to bond with what? Probably Technicals or Grenadiers. And then Gunners. No, I, I, um, I want, yeah, I want gunners of the direct fire classes. Bonding gunners and rangers, I think, is most important because of the cumulative aim bonus bonuses once they start getting high levels of bond. And when a sector pod shows up, you have your sharpshooter throw the quick targeting on it. Then your gunner uses triple shot, which sh shreds away all the armor and hits it three times. And then your ranger can shoot once and then go into overwatch and get the whole... All, all the extra Overwatch stuff going. Hang on, so Virtual Viking says, don't forget you can save up for that 40 cost AP from the start. Yeah, but I, I would I would have to get 40 AP on him and I would need the training center. The training center is not going to happen anytime soon. Of the starting knot, give me one more Shinobi here. Maybe Jensen. We're just going to have to give him a hit point PCS. Okay, so ranged attacks, so that's crap. Field medic is actually amazing. It's amazing on a shinobi, and the fact that he's got high combat intelligence helps as well. That's okay, that's crap. I uh, think that applies to sword attacks, so that's pretty good, that's crap. Uh, oh, that is amazing. Okay, so Jensen is alpha shinobi. And then of the starting lot, I want at least one specialist. Looks like Diallo and Bloody Peasant are the specialists and both of them are wounded. I want to start power leveling specialists because they're going to be the officers in the early game until the side troopers start taking over. Sixty-seven aim on Booze Martin. Fifteen mobility is not bad. I think this is a ranger. Deep cover is rubbish. Uh, Shadow Strike is okay, but he's got low intelligence. That sucks. Who's your dumbass? Upper deployment is crap. Uh, if you have moved this turn, that's not too great. I don't want to be moving. When targeted, fire back. That's okay, although I worry about how that interacts with the Overwatch tree I want to go down. Ruthless. Killing a panicked or disoriented enemy unit with your sword off refunds an action point that's pretty crap so situational the enemy has to be panicked or disoriented and it has to be a sword off shot shots fired ps3 armor okay that all of a sudden turns this dude into a god ranger hmm Virtual Viking, you saying that return fire crashed your game for you? Well, someone please remind me of this later in the campaign. But what do we do with uh, Waldo the Ranger Haddock? He's got decent dodge, actually. So much so that I might think of it as the third Shinobi. Because I want to try filling out three squads right from the start, so that'll give us Alpha Bravo and Charlie Shinobis. The Shinobis are kind of going to be solo operators until we get side troopers in the field. 
specialists are going to combine with, let's say, grenadiers. Need to make a note of this somewhere. There's me notepad. Do this actually off stream. I don't have a pen here. No pen. Mask red shoes. <laughs> Very cool. Flash banger is S tier. It's amazing on pretty much anybody. Impulse is crap. Rapid deployment is usually crap, but because of flash banger, it makes it good. Hail of bullets should not be underestimated. It could be situationally okay. Overkill is. Eh. Combat fitness is, I would argue, the best ability in the game. And disabling shot is kind of okay. I think Jensen is still our alpha Kenobi. Yeah, lightning slash and field medic is just too good. Okay. Uh, prepare your ears, lads. It's about to get loud. Ooh, sorry about that. So, everybody on, on Intel. So, we're starting in Western Europe. Impressive, isn't it? I do find now. This is often underlooked in the campaign, but the placement, the debris and machinery placement, and power coil placement can actually make or break a campaign. This is pretty unlucky. What, what you want is one of the power coils to be in one of these three positions. Because what you do is, or what I like to do, is to excavate this particular block here as soon as I possibly can. And then you have one of your gremlins operating there. But this just means now we're going to have to go here, excavate here, put a workshop down, and then you have a workshop for ideally power, resistance comms, resistance comms, maybe proving ground. We could put the workshop down here, but it's going to take too long to get it there to give its bonuses. Excavate, 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 build a workshop, immediately start excavating. And Okay. One of five intel. Commander. No, oh, fifty-two minutes. Okay, let's call Avengers the first episode there. New course. Right, lads. Private channel and modular construction, which are what exactly? I said the construction. That's kind of meh. That's okay. Well, what you really want is the Reapers so you can get the excavation speed. So what I'm going to do with my starting supplies, I go straight to the black market and I immediately do whatever I can, liquidate everything, to get an engineer and a scientist in as I can. Uh, and hope that they're paying double for the stuff you want to sell. Illyrium crystals and data pad stores, exactly not what I I need 45 supplies to get the scientist to sell all the corpses there will be plenty more coming to 25 30 40 Righto, so see, which one pays more? 42, 47 here. And then we're just going to leave the scientist to passively drip in with the uh, 20% reduction. Although actually, these are pretty quick to be quick to complete. So maybe just start with scientist to boost our intel gathering, especially considering what a rough gate pressure we had. Okay. Take a little break there. When we come back, episode two. Let's see if we can rock this ship. But um, really what's going to determine that for us is how the next few weeks of missions go. I'm assuming that for the f next few missions, every mission is going to be one Shinobi plus you know, five or six rookies. Going to be interesting. 
Well, lads, thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying it. For those of you watching on YouTube now, I'm uploading episode per episode rather than big blocks of stream. Hope you all prefer it like that. If you want to submit a character, check the link in the description for the Discord and uh, create a soldier, export it as a bin file. If you don't know how to do that, there's a website called Google. You type in export soldier XCOM 2 and there's some uh, articles there that'll show you how to do it. Upload the bin. One of the mods will check it out. Uh, and then I'll add it, and then you probably shouldn't have to wait more than... That's new. We'll have to wait, wait more than an episode or two before your guy gets uh, added. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.